uh, in, in general, the brain knows and feels everything except itself. So there is no pain involved in, in uh, brain surgery. Deep brain stimulation, whatever you use it for, whether it's for a psychiatric uh, application or uh, movement disorders, it's a reversible procedure. You don't destroy anything. So if something doesn't work, then you can tone it down. You can switch the electrode contacts. You can change the shape, size, and scope of the electric cloud that you have created around uh, your, your, uh, your target structure. We would, we would select the target based off of the, um, based off of the person's disease uh, burden and their particular, you know, it's personalized medicine, so their particular set of symptoms and then the surgeon would, um, once, once we discussed and they also agreed on the target, we would, um, they, they would be the ones to fine tune exactly where it is um, with what they call stereotactic and functional neurosurgery. So, so Dr. Takic figures out exactly the point in which it is in the brain. And so we're actually in the OR, turning the, turning the device on in the OR, making sure that it's not causing any side effects, that, it's in, that it appears to be in the right place from his responses. And so some people will actually um, smile in the OR when it's in the right place or feel a sense of calm. The surgery is, is uh, fairly simple actually. Um, that being said, what is complicated about the surgery happens before you perform it. You have to select the right patient. Uh, then you have to uh, perform some intricate imaging. Then you have to feed all the images into a computer and you have to, uh, uh, to the best of your ability, merge the images to bring out anatomical features that on any individual MRI sequence are not so obvious. Then when you have that, then you have to figure out the best trajectory to get there. And uh, you have to know what trajectories are allowable and which ones are forbidden. Uh, you don't want to transgress with a needle or a cannula through things where you cause more trouble than what you gain. For most of, of these surgeries, you are dealing with centers in the brain where so many different functions are packed close to each other, or the cables leading to and from uh, important centers. So when you put your electrode in, it is not uncommon that when you turn on the stimulation, your signal will echo over into something that controls something completely different. So for instance, in movement disorders, when you're trying to, uh, to uh, control somebody's tremor, and uh, you put in the electrode, and uh, you turn on the electricity, and the patient's tremor subsides, and you give him a laser pointer and you have him pointed a cross in the ceiling or something and he's all rock steady and he's happy and he says yeah this is this is really nice but why is everything green then you know that your signal is sort of whispering over into another tract i think it's imperative to put out there that we are no longer limited by what we can do or study, we are limited by resources to continue to do this type of research. When you talk about treatment protocols, I mean, it's actually fascinating. So if I, if I have this technology, but you can't get it paid for, or we don't have a current research trial for it, no one's getting it. Okay. Uh, or five people with the treatment, everyone has had some type of response, three people in remission of the depression, and I've had several say that 
I would not have survived or be alive at this point without this technology.